Aloha. I'm your host, Marcia Mar Joyner. That's who I am. <laughs> and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for end-of-life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so that we shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live at the end of our lives. And it's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and don't want for ourselves. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care unit. Together, we explore the various paths to life's endings. Together, we can make these difficult conversations easier. Together, we can make sure our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. So if you're ready to join us, we ask, navigate the journey. As you know, we are supporting legislation to have medical aid in dying made legal in Hawaii. Therefore, we have invited Doug Chin, the state's attorney, to talk about the legal issues with the bill. Most of our audience knows Doug as the state's attorney general who pursued legal action regarding President Trump's new travel ban. So he's our new hero. And <laughs> welcome, Doug. Hi there. Thank you for having me on the show. Appreciate it. Uh, I absolutely love Doug when uh, Doug, when the new mayor, uh, Peter Carlisle, became mayor, and Doug was his managing director, and I was working at city council. Yes. And so, as protocol, we said, I said to Doug, I will come over to meet you. And he says, no, 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 no. I will come to you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. Yeah, he yeah. came to all of the people in the city council, introduced himself that he was the new managing director. Yeah, yeah. And for anybody that doesn't know, the, with the city has three branches of government, like everything. The mayor's office, the city council, and the corp council, equal branches. And until uh, Doug came along, they weren't equal. But once he came along, the working relationship seemed more, better, equal. <laughs> Great. I'm glad, I'm glad you felt that way. <laughs> I wanted to do my best. Yes. Thank you. So, so today we are going to talk about this bill, okay. medical aid and dying. And I'm not going to ask you to take a position, which I understand that because of your position as the state's attorney general, you cannot. But you can talk to us about what is in the bill. What are the processes that we go through with the bill? And what do we look for? What do you look for in the bill? Sure. Okay. So. Sure. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity to talk about this. And, and I think essentially what I would say is what um, physicians and medical care providers were looking for um, was some sort of legal authority or legal ability if they chose to uh, help someone uh, with the with the, the dying process, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to use the right terminology oh, when, okay. I, when I talk about it. <laughs> that's I, there's all right. Different ways to um, refer to it, but um, but with this uh, with the aid in dying process, um, I, I think medical care providers, whether they were doctors or nurses or, or people who were involved in the process, they they did not want to be um, held criminally or civilly liable uh, for their actions. And, uh, and, and so as it turns out, uh, for, the, um, for as long as Hawaii has had a penal code, uh, which is part of, uh, and I've got to say that dates back to the, the model penal code, um, th there is a provision uh, under the manslaughter statute uh, which, which says that just in, in a regular circumstance, if somebody intentionally assists somebody uh, in, in causing them to commit suicide, um, that's considered manslaughter. Now, now I, I realize that's not what um, these people are, are thinking about or trying to accomplish, but that's just the traditional language that's already been there. So, so uh, what I see is, is that this is, a, um, this is an effort to uh, give medical care providers the, the protection 
and the, the, uh, you know, the comfort level that they, they need in order to be able to do this, which then in turn helps the, the patients uh, if they want something like this, then, then they're able to seek out this kind of assistance um, without having to do it illegally or, or in, in a way that, that's unsafe. So there's so many things that, um, first of all, let's go back to um, sedation, terminal sedation. Okay. Now, that's legal. Terminal sedation is when the doctor prescribes morphine or whatever. I, I don't know all the drugs, so if right. I get that right. wrong, I'm, I don't right. know. And I'm not a doctor either, <laughs> I but, but, but I, I understand what you mean, meaning they, that, that there's a way that they can sedate them. Uh, if, until yes. they're gone. Right. That's legal. So how, how is it that this is the same thing and it's not legal? Right. Well, sure. And I think there, there is a fine line that, that's there, but I, I think... Uh, you know, I mean, doctors take the, again, I'm not a doctor, but, but I, I, I've heard them talk about their, uh, you know, share their testimony and, and just what's important to them. Um, and, and really, you know, part of the mission of people who are medical care providers, and let's just say doctors, um, is that they're always going to want to be able to save lives and protect lives. And, and so here you have a situation where, where somebody is seeking to, to end their life, and they're, and they're seeking to do it in, in a way that's humane and, and that, uh, you know, allows them to uh, pass on with, with dignity. But I think, it, you know, for, for certain doctors, they, they will draw a line between sedation and then actually uh, prescribing or assisting somebody in, in causing their death. So um, it's, it's a subtle difference, but it's there. Yep. And so if you take an oath that you will do no harm, uh, letting a person suffer when you can do something that's humane is that, I mean, to me, that's a real right. fine line. Right. Oh, and, and I, I think that's definitely what, what I've heard from the advocate. I mean, let me just start off by saying yeah. this. I think through this whole, uh, particularly this legislative season, uh, it's been so um, you know, fascinating and moving uh, just to hear people on both sides of the issue talk about this. But, but I think that's definitely something that people who are advocating for this bill to pass uh, are saying, which is that there, there's so much suffering um, that involves and so much loss of dignity uh, that occurs uh, because they're, they're just being kept alive uh, w without any, any sort of uh, you know, pleasures or, or just the, 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 the ability to just in, enjoy their life anymore, uh, that they want to be able to make that choice for themselves. Well, yes, and that, I think that's where we're coming from is mm -hmm. that we, the, the Bible says we have a free will and we can make mm -hmm. choices. Mm -hmm. Our Constitution says we have the right to make choices, we have the right to privacy, and that we can do these things. Right. And yet there's this whole thing that says, no, you can't do that. Right, right. And you know, I, I got to say, even when I was in law school, it was 22 years ago, but when I was in <laughs> law school, um, I remember that this was, and I think this was back in the time of uh, Karen Ann Quinlan, I mean, because right. that was back in the 70s, but, but you know, I was, I was around and, and, and in, in law school by the time that case had gone through. And, and so th this has been an issue for a generation. I mean, I think people have really talked about this. I, I've never seen it um, develop uh, within the Hawaii State Legislature as much as it has to, to even get to this point. Um, but I think people have always um, wanted to understand, you know, how do we draw that line? And I think this is such a, uh, a fascinating issue. When, now, uh, John Radcliffe, which yes. all of our audience knows because we've talked to John for right. any number of times, he filed suit against you. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> But I love them anyway. <laughs> so it's just, uh, so, it's just so, the legal battle. It's yeah. just, it's just uh, so the way litigation what, works. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. what? Tell us about the lawsuit. Sure. Okay. So that's uh, thank you. That, that's a good question. Uh, so th what they're um, what they're focusing on is just the the ability. Um, well, what happened was I had written an opinion, and also my predecessor had had written an opinion saying that that there's nothing in our uh, current law, uh, you know, so right now we've got legislation, but right now we've got a current existing law. There's nothing in our current law that would stop uh, a prosecutor, uh, whether it was me or whether it was another county prosecutor or someone who came after me, uh, from prosecuting somebody for, uh, for manslaughter. Now, I'm not saying that we would, 
but I'm saying that that, that possibility is out there. So, uh, so I can understand why, with that possibility out there, it's very difficult for um, for uh, medical care providers, let's say doctors, uh, to to be able to uh, to be able to agree then because they don't know what's going to happen to them if they were to help assist somebody in the in the dying process. So, um, so anyway, what what they're seeking in the lawsuit is they want a court to say no, you cannot. Um, you, you, you wouldn't be able, you prosecutors wouldn't be able to uh, take that kind of action. They're seeking some sort of declaratory relief. That's the, for, that's the legal to term To protect for it. the doctor. Correct. It's Correct. Over. Which would then, and, and in doing so, it then allows uh, Mr. Radcliffe, who's a wonderful man, uh, to be able to uh, get the assistance that he needs and know that they can do it with the comfort that they're going to be uh, not held they, criminally or civilly liable. Okay, so now uh, it looks like of course, that the legislation is moving faster than the lawsuit. Right, right. Which kind of makes sense. Like, in other words, I mean, so I'll take I'll tell you my position, which is that I actually think this is this rather than having the courts just come out with some sort of ruling, I, I think it's really better to have the policy people, the people's representatives, um, you know, make that decision. Uh, you know, but that's just me. So, so I, I, you know, I think they're they're pursuing it on two paths, and and you're correct. The, yeah. the legislation is is moving it's faster. Faster right than. Now. Then, so even if you moved, you, the court, uh, would that just protect this one case or would it be for future cases? Mm, that's a good question. Um, it, it would just be for this case, but, but I'm sure that people would then use this case as, if, you know, let's say, let's assume Mr. Radcliffe were to prevail, uh, then, then it would be just for Mr. Radcliffe, but, but that kind of declaratory action would be a precedent for, uh, for future, mm -hmm. um, future cases. Uh, we have to go to a break, and when we come back, I want to ask you a lot of questions about what happens should the bill pass, okay. what happens next. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Hawaii, and I do a show called Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where shrinks and sometimes other people come on and talk about the art and science of psychology, talking to people, relationships. Uh, so if you are curious about shrinks and want to be shrunk and don't know where to go, tune into Shrink Wrap Hawaii. All right? All right. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii and look forward to seeing you at Education Matters on Tuesdays with me, Carol Monley. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, energy, diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha, this is Kelihi Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. Hi, we're back. <laughs> and today we are visiting with Hawaii State's Attorney General. What a title. Yeah, Doug no, Chen. That's, that's a great a title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're talking about the medical aid in dying bill. So as the Attorney General, what is it in the bill that you are looking for? Huh. Okay, um, you know what I, I would say from a from a law enforcement perspective, I, I'm looking for clarity. Uh, in, in other words, what um, what we what we really want to do is is if the policymakers are are going to meaning the legislators and the governor say we're going to let this bill go through, then as a law enforcement person, what I want to do is I would want to make sure that the good actors are protected and that bad actors are prosecuted, and 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 I think that that would be. Um, that would be what I'm looking for is, is a clarity uh, within the uh, within the the law that that makes sure we're separating out the good actors and the bad actors. Good actors meaning those are the people who uh, are are you know not taking advantage of the situation or anything like that. They they genuinely believe in what this policy is all about. Um, bad actors would be the people who uh, you know perhaps take advantage of somebody uh, and 
you know, it leads to the death of someone, you know, because of that. That would that would actually not be good at all. And and so I think we we would want to make sure that we have the ability to prosecute okay. those people. So in the bill, it talks about coercion. Sure does. Yes. So yes. What is what? Who? What? How, how does that work? What is coercion? Right. Well, you know, I what what you wouldn't want is you wouldn't. And and I I realize that this is you know kind of the nightmare worst case scenario. But but what you wouldn't want is, is somebody who is coerced or pressured into saying, you know, I think I'll, you know, I'll, uh, you know my relatives don't really want me, I, I don't want to be around, you know, I, I'm, I'm discouraged and depressed because, you know, I'm causing such a burden to everybody, so maybe I should just end my life and, and I'll find a doctor to be able to do that for me. And, then, and so what you wouldn't want is some, uh, what the law relies upon is the judgment of medical care providers to be able to talk to these patients and make sure that their decision is voluntary, that it's based upon a terminal illness, that there, that, that there are certain protections in place. So we all have to rely upon those medical care providers to make the right judgment. And so what I, you know, and I, and I can trust that there are great medical care providers that could do that. Um, I, I think the big thing is just to make sure that there are not, um, you know, the bad actors who would then uh, sanction something like this, even though it's not really what the, the patient you know, right. voluntarily wants. Well, you know, quote, bad actors, uh, if they really want to do something, they'll find a way to do it. I mean, yeah. they do it all the time. Right, right. Uh, for instance, with hospice, if they are with the patient, the bad actors, and there's no nurses, nobody around, and they give them something, and the person dies. Hospice has the final say. They sign the death certificate. There are no autopsies. Nobody knows. Right. So if a bad actor really wants to do something, right. there's an opportunity. They will find a right. way. Right. Right. So you're right. I, so uh, you're correct that the the law will will never be able to. You know, I mean, there's, there's always going to be bad actors out yes. there, so you're right. So I think the, the thing that I would be looking for is just to make sure that if those bad actors ever were to do something, then we would have the ability to prosecute them and, and they wouldn't just be able to say, oh, well, I'm protected, though, because of, this, um, because yeah. of these laws. So, so I, I do see the, the legislators uh, working very hard because the, the, this we're on second draft, third draft of this, yeah. and, and I can see that the, the, they are really... Uh, doing, I mean, really putting in a great effort trying to work with the language just to try to get it right, and uh, I applaud them for doing so. I applaud for people like you <laughs> for, you know, uh, holding their feet to the fire as well as uh, all the people who've testified okay. on this issue. Let's talk about the safeguards. Now, we sure to protect not only the patient, but everybody else involved. Yes, yeah. What what are you, you're looking at safeguards. What do you look for? Right. Well, uh, you know, I think the the I, I see two things. I think for the patient, it, it's got to be that they have a, a terminal illness and, and that they are they're making a voluntary, uh, you know, clear-minded, you know, op walking into it with eyes open decision. Yeah, I think that that's what I, I'm, I'm kind of using lay terms to, well, that's, to talk that's about. Fine. What's in the yeah. Which is good. Because <laughs> I, 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 okay, I don't know yeah. those terms. Yeah, yeah, but he's too much legalese. That is that. But, but that's I guess that's what I'm trying to say is that is that you want to have. Um, a, a patient who you know who has a strong you know self will, a strong strong understanding of that. Um, so that's the protection for them. We want to make sure that that's that's going on. And then for the um, for the medical care providers, uh, whether it's you know, you know the doctors or whoever is attending or consulting with them, you want to make sure that that they're licensed, that they you know that they have the professional ability to make a diagnosis that's proper, um, and, and then also that they you know they end up having to vouch for the fact that this person is making a, a voluntary decision. So that's and that's a very you know that, that's a important. Uh, role that they need to play, and and it's why we uh, you know appreciate people who go into the healthcare profession because I, I'm sure it's something that they have to live with and 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 work with all the time. Yep. Now, when we look at uh, these quote safeguards, mm. we assume, and I have to assume, that the primary care person. Uh, has been with this patient through the process of the treatments, the ailment as it has progressed. So we have to assume that they really are in touch. Yes. That, I mean, right. uh, at least my relationship with with uh, John Radcliffe, yeah. this, he's had the same doctor 
for 15 years, you know. Right. So this doctor knows where he is emotionally, physically, the whole thing. So he, right. he can make this judgment. Now let's talk, uh, and I'm, I assume everybody has that. Right. Now. Uh, you know, and I would say that I think if the, if the law were to pass, that would be the best case scenario, right? That would be something where at least we could have some level of comfort, comfort. That, yes. that there's been a long time relationship, this person really knows what they're talking about, uh, they really understand the patient's uh, needs and concerns. Um, you know, and, and so the, the other extreme would be something where you feel like someone just came in at the last minute and just, you know, signed But a piece if you of have a terminal illness, nobody shows up at the last minute, <laughs> you know. Sure. You, you've <laughs> been going down this road for right. a while. Right, Yeah, right. terminal illnesses don't just show up. Right. I mean, right. if you have pneumonia, two days later, you know, anything yeah. like that. Let's, and let's talk about this as a, not only the physician, but the advanced practical, advanced practice bar ends, registered okay. nurses. Okay, sure. Okay. Right. Now, right. in Hawaii, yes. all the bills that have passed across the country say two physicians, but in Hawaii, because of our geography, right. you can't always come up with two physicians. Right. And a lot of cases in rural Hawaii, the nurses, advanced practice, registered nurses are the primary care. Right. So I know we, we proposed that amendment and I think it's in this last draft. But I want to talk about right. that so people understand this isn't just an RN, this is a real An advanced practice, practice. RN. Yes, yeah. and okay. so in yeah. rural Hawaii, right. so many of them have their own practice. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah that, thank you for bringing that up because I think that's from a legal standpoint that, that is something that's uh, more unique about this uh, this current Hawaii law in, in, in its current draft. So um, a lot of the draft is based on model language from some Somewhere, of the few other yes. states that have that have passed mm -hmm. this this law on the West Coast. That's great. Um, where Hawaii is a little different, and it's because of the the rural concern that you brought up, um, is, is they've also added in the ability for um, advanced practice registered nurses to be able to make certain decisions. Um, what I see in the most recent draft is, is that uh, what they've done is, uh, you know, you have an attending person that decides, and you have a consulting person that decides. Two different people that make the decision to to sign off on, you know, the the ultimate decision, and. Um, and so what they've done is they've allowed the advanced practice registered nurse to be, uh, to still be able to make that decision for one of them. So I think the attending, I think on the attending part, the advanced practice registered nurse can do that, but not on the consulting portion. So I, what I see there is that the legislators are trying to balance out the rural concern along with the, um, along with the, the concern that maybe, you know, advanced practice registered nurses shouldn't be the only ones that are making this decision. Well. But if you live in Molokai, Lanai, right. Captain Cook, you know, where are you going to find an extra doctor? Right. I, I hear you. And that's, and that's where I think that, that, that there's an effort to try to um, accommodate that, that kind of situation. So, um, so that, that, that's all I'm saying is that I, I think you're, what you're, you're, you're pointing out um, an interesting part, a part of our uh, current bill um, that is unique. Um, and uh, and we'll see we'll see how the uh, our decision makers decide to play that out. Okay, now let's go. Let's assume that it passes. The governor signs it because he said he would. <laughs> well, he did. Okay. On. Yeah. Well, and. In, okay. Uh, so what happens? It goes to you. Right. And you look at the legalese to make sure right. it's right. Now. What happens then? How do we put this into practice? What goes next? Right. You know, I, I think there's a rules component that, that is part of this uh, part of this legislation, um, which will be which would have to occur. So, in other words, once the bill, uh, once if the bill passes uh, and it's signed into law, then uh, then part of this bill includes a. a portion for the Department of Health to, to come up with, you know, a, a little bit more of a framework uh, to be able to make all this happen. You know, what's, what's, the, what's the form going to look like? What's the process going to look like? Um, but that would be part of the, you know, the, the uh, government's, uh, that'd be part of the government's responsibility to, uh, to be able to uh, put this law into implementation. So, so that goes to the Department of Health? Mm -hmm. And 
do you have anything any input before oh, yeah. it goes there yeah <laughs> so you know so i mean we'll we'll be we'll be tracking it all the way you know in other words we're tracking it right now trying to help out legislators with their questions um, as they're trying to uh, you know work with the drafts uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll be available for the governor if he has any questions about about the uh, bill legally uh, if he has to make a decision and then ultimately we'll be there to uh, help out the Department of Health uh, we're the we're the state's lawyers so that's what we do <laughs> well great well it's yeah. been a real pleasure being yeah. with you as Marcia, always. you're awesome. So I, I, <laughs> as always, I love it's always been yeah. yeah, yeah, a pleasure. Yeah, great. And we will see you again before this is over. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. You're okay. Keep me uh, keep me uh, uh, accountable on this. So that's great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much okay. for coming. Great. And we will see you again soon. Great. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you.